You want to kick us off with a song? And yeah. Breaker, breaker, all trucks in the way back. Calling all coolers to the brown pack. It's the kind of night you need at least ten for. And if you're thinking I'm a certified son of a gun, you're dang right, but it has a big ten for you. Over and out. All right. Yeah, yeah. We were chatting before the show, and he's like, "I can handle this, no problem. We can talk outdoors. Yeah, we can yeah. talk. <laughs> Thirty minutes ain't long enough." <laughs> Tennessee turkey season has passed. Uh, it was a great season for a lot of folks. That's what I want to talk about. How was your season? I, I saw you killed awesome. your first Tennessee bird. Right? First Tennessee bird. First Kentucky bird. Okay. Um, and you had and a then, Georgia and bird. I had a Georgia there. bird. I think it's cool that you got three birds and those three yeah. trifecta yeah. connected yeah. states right yeah. there. Yeah, absolutely. They were all three so fun. But yeah, the Georgia bird, the, the highlight of that story was I was about 10 feet from a, a, about a 10 foot alligator when I was getting to that turkey. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> the award winning Tennessee Wildcast is on the air with the latest on hunting, fishing, boating, wildlife watching, and all things outdoors. Make welcome your host, drummer and outdoor expert novice, Jason Harmon. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Tennessee Wildcast. We're glad you're tuning in. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We're back in Studio B, Don. And, yes, uh, back home. Yeah, excited about today's show. I am, too, and uh, we get to roll a little music here in this show. It, yeah, it, we're excited. It's always fun when we can work in some music into the show. We're right here in Nashville when we're home in the studio, so what better place to play a song or two? I know. I know it's great. It's great. And Do you uh, want to kick off a radio station? Yeah, before yeah. We get started ninety three point nine, the Duck in uh, gosh, serving Southern Middle Tennessee and mm -hmm. uh, doing a great job of it. Uh, Saturdays at seven a.m. You can hear us on ninety three point nine, the Duck ninety three point nine. Yeah, that's a great station. I've heard great things about the reach down there. Yes, uh, you know, folks are tuning in and listening. Uh, a lot of good programming on that station. So go check them out. Yeah, and right after us comes the sports show yeah yeah shout out to mark nothing better than uh outdoors and sports put together that's right, right. and a little bit of music uh-huh um but yeah let me remind folks if you're if you're watching go check us out on on the radio go find us on your podcast your favorite podcasting app uh we're putting stuff out there on our instagram channels uh, our facebook channels in uh, twitter all those places so and if you like to watch go find us on youtube so. yeah uh all right, I think that's the PSAs for this morning or for this <laughs> afternoon. Um, we have Jordan Rowe with us. Jordan, thanks for being with us. Absolutely, thanks for having me. I'm excited. Yeah, I am too. I am too. Uh, if you've seen the show or listened to the show, uh, we've kind of teamed up with Music Row Outdoors on Instagram. Right. Yep. Abram, Abram Dean over there. He he's great about connecting us with artists and upcoming artists and, and established artists and those that are you know making music here in Nashville and it's fun and they love the outdoors. Yes. So, so we can talk hunting and fishing and and music. So I'm excited. Living Absolutely. the dream. Living the dream. It's all my favorite things. Yeah, yeah. We were chatting before the show, and he's like, "I can handle this. No problem. We can talk outdoors. Yeah, <laughs> we can yeah. talk. <laughs> Thirty minutes ain't long enough." <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but let's get a little bit of background about you, uh, Jordan. What uh, where'd you grow up, and and what brought you? To, I guess music brought you to Nashville. But how'd you get here? Yeah. So I grew up in South Georgia. Um, so this Tennessee Volunteers piggy bank kind of hurts my feelings, <laughs> but uh, grew up in South Georgia um, and sang in church all my life. Growing up, that's how I got my start. And I, actually, I played the drums in my church. Awesome. That was my first instrument. Awesome. Um, and went to UGA for college um, and studied agribusiness and ag economics there. Um, and that was kind of my first plan was to go back and work in agriculture uh, in Georgia. And then Lord had different plans for my life, and I started um, playing some shows down there around Athens, uh, acoustic shows. I was opening up for guys like Riley Green when they'd come through the Georgia Theater awesome. at that time. And that's how I got my start and uh, started traveling back and forth to Nashville. Um, summer of 17 was my first summer. Spent summer of 18 up here in between school. And then when I graduated in 19, I moved straight up. So this month makes four years full time. All right. Four years in the in the music business. In the but, music business. So, yeah. so where did you think you saw yourself going with the ag and all that what did you want to want to do before music or i have no idea <laughs> <laughs> seemed I have like no a good idea. idea man i started out i started out um you know just i actually started college pre-med 
And I did that for like a month and hated it. <laughs> hated it. And so I was like, no. Sometimes I'll... you have to try something to realize what you yeah, don't want to do. Exactly. You know? Exactly. I just, I didn't have any friends in those classes. I didn't enjoy the material. And so, um, you know, I, there's obviously a lot of agribusiness in Georgia. And I always, you know, grew up around that, had an appreciation for that. Mm-hmm. So I said, I'll go. There's plenty of jobs down there for that. Yeah. So that's what I did. So do you have a family farm? I don't. We, my, my dad is a police officer. Um, my mom works for the small um, city there in Adel. Um, uh-huh. But all my, my cousins, they farm. My, my best friends growing up did. I worked at the Ag Expo down in Moultrie uh, when I was in high school. So I, just, I grew up around farms, you okay. know, on a, on a farm, so to speak. Was You know, my whole county was a yeah. farm. So yeah. all around it. That's awesome. Well, it's uh, it's always good to have friends that have a piece of property here and there to get yeah. on. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's what kills me up here when I don't have a place to hunt. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, we got a lot of good public land around here to yeah, we yeah, do. chase animals on. And, yeah. and, and we're going to talk about that first Tennessee bird. You got the first yeah. Tennessee bird this yeah. year during the turkey season. So we're going to touch on that here in a minute. But uh, you want to kick us off with a song? And yeah. That'd be yeah. fun to, to kick us off. And I think if, if you're going to do the one I'm thinking about, I, I really enjoyed listening to this one. I on appreciate the, it. On the YouTube music app the other day. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. So if everybody listening, this uh, this song right here is out everywhere you can listen to music. And it's called 10-4. It's 10-4. And uh, I got to put this out a couple years back, um, fall of 21, with a few heroes of mine, Mr. Tracy Lawrence, Eddie Montgomery from Montgomery Gentry, and Red Aiken. So this one right here goes like this. Breaking, breaking all trucks in the way back, calling all coolers to the brown pack. Ain't a six pack sitting in the floorboard. It's the kind of night you need at least ten four. And if you get in a bind on your way out, that four wheel drive gets some down. That red clay grounds up to the door. Call a buddy, that's what you got. Ten four. And if you're thinking I'm a certified son of a gun, haul a whole lot of country in my old half ton. Work like a dog till the work gets done. Get the off my back if you ain't got none If you think I got a bad case of good old boy you damn right buddy that's a big ten four All oh, baby's looking good in her Wranglers She's sweeter than a strawberry acre She gets it from her mama and the good lord And there's more that I could get a ten four. And if you're thinking I'm a certified son of a gun, all a whole lot of country in my old half ton. Work like a dog till the work gets done. Give the beer off my back if you ain't got none. If you think I got a bad case of good old boy, well, you damn right, but it has a big ten four. Come on. That's awesome. That's awesome. I, I to be able to record that with some of the the greatest out there. I mean, that was cool to be able to, to share that song with them. It, it was really cool, man. It was special. And um, you know, the old saying says, "Don't meet your heroes because you just never know." But uh, <laughs> thankfully, that was not the case here. They were all awesome. Yeah. And um, and uh, me and Red especially have stayed friends since then. And uh, but they were all awesome guys. How did that collaboration come about? Uh, so the first one that said yes was Rhett, and um, he and I, I think we had written once, and he had took me deer hunting one time out oh, at okay. his place, uh-huh. um, one of his farms out, 
I forget what the name of the town was. It's out past Thompson Station, oh, out yeah. way back there. Um, and uh, so we kind of had already had a relationship, and I asked him, and he said, yeah, man, it sounds like 90s country I'm in. So <laughs> got him, um, and then I wanted to get uh, Tracy Lawrence, and we sent the track to his manager and told him Rhett was in and couldn't get a response, got a no. And then I was like, I don't even think Tracy's heard this. His manager just don't want to bother him with it. <laughs> yeah, right. right. And I was like, there's no way he doesn't like this song if he hears it. And so I was like, you know, they say no is the start of a conversation, right? Yeah, so there you go. went back, and uh, the producer who mixed the demo um, also works with Tracy and produces some of his stuff. So I got it to Tracy through that guy, and Tracy heard it and was like, yeah, let's do it. So I'm glad, you know, kept knocking. <laughs> yeah. um, and then uh, Eddie came on. Um, at that time, the management company I was with, they had um, a previous connection and, and worked with Montgomery Gentry. And so uh, he heard Rhett and Tracy were in, and he said, yeah, let's do it. So yeah, they were awesome. awesome. Yeah, it was, it was a great, great cut, uh, you know, hearing those guys singing with you. It's, it's fun. It's Who wrote fun. the song? Did you write the song? I did. Awesome. Uh me and Drew Parker and uh, Drew's uh, another artist who's up and coming. He's got a record deal with Warner. He's got his first song on the radio now. So I'm gonna plug Drew here. Y'all go check him out. <laughs> yeah. um, and then one of our friends, Hunter Phelps, um, and he's crushing it in songwriting space. And I know you had mentioned "Bad Case of the Good Old Boy" earlier, mm -hmm. which is another song. The idea for "Bad Case of the Good Old Boy" came out of Ten Four because there's that oh, line yeah. in there. If you think I got a bad case of good old boy, yeah, huh? and we were like, oh, that's a whole song in itself. <laughs> Let's write that. Maybe an album title too. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and yeah. so yeah, so we bookended that project with "Bad Case of the Good Old Boy" and then Ten Four, you know, finished it, and it was kind of a nod back to that song. So. Nice. I yeah. love the play on it. I love the play on Ten Four. Thank you. It's perfect. Yeah. It's perfect. Well. Uh, we better talk about some outdoor stuff while we're here, too. Yeah. Uh, so Tennessee turkey season has passed. Uh, it was a great season for a lot of folks. Uh, 31,802 birds killed statewide. Yeah. So uh, had some good numbers all across the state. I mean, uh, Region 2, you know, obviously is the highest. Uh, it's got probably the better bird hunting uh, with 11,000 plus. And then the other regions, 1, 2, and uh, 4 averaged out. Seven thousand, six thousand, six thousand. So it was a pretty good season for yeah. Yeah. for uh, for everybody, and uh, that's what I want to talk about. How was your season? I, I saw it you killed awesome. your first Tennessee bird. Right? First Tennessee bird, first Kentucky bird. Okay, um, and you had and a Georgia then, bird. And I had a Georgia there. bird. Yep, went home and got a Georgia bird. That they were all three so fun. Um, but yeah, the Georgia bird. The the highlight of that story was I was about ten feet from a. a about a 10 foot alligator when i was getting to that turkey <laughs> oh, he was uh he was strutting out in a yeah, there was there was a canal the, the place i was hunting is called no man's friend swamp it's what they call it all the old timers hmm. and it's just there's a bunch of crop fields separated by canals um and so a lot of times to get close to a bird you have to get in the water if you really want to get close to them so i was wading <laughs> through this canal and like walk up on this alligator and he scared me a lot worse than i scared him i think but he took <laughs> off and, Anyway, we got the, the turkey down, but that was that was the most memorable thing. That's um, something we don't have to worry about here. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But uh, but yeah, man, Tennessee bird, it was awesome. Um, I've I've been trying to find permission on a place for the last, like I said, June. You know, this year's four years I've been here, mm -hmm. and I've tried to get permission on farms ever since I've been here, and just didn't have any luck. You know, I've probably sent out two hundred something letters and knocked on a gazillion doors, and just never had luck until. Wow this year um and it was honestly like a cool god thing that i got permission on this place i played a, a a show for um a private show for this guy in december and we had talked like hunting briefly mm -hmm. but barely and uh -huh. he emailed me probably a month after the show and he's like man this is kind of weird you might think this is weird but i feel like um, the Holy Spirit was leading me to tell you, to show you my farm. I got a farm in Leapers Fork. Oh, I mean, wow. not Leapers Fork, Lewisburg. Yeah. Um, and we hadn't even talked about that during that show. And I was like, Yeah, man, I'd love to. And so um, he took me out there, and he was like, Hunt turkeys on any time you want. And I was like, Dude, this is a gospel. Like, you don't know how much I pray for a spot to hunt. Yeah, so, you've been trying. Yeah. Oh, and so man. it was awesome. Went out there and and, um, and got a bird the first time I was out there hunting. So it was cool. It was awesome. special. It's pretty place. Music I, opens a lot of doors, doesn't it? It does. It absolutely does. It yep. it's it's amazing how. Uh, what a universal language it is yeah. and how, how many people can connect with it and, and 
you know, get you a hunting spot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, through music. It's <laughs> yeah. awesome. Yeah. I'm pumped. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so then, uh, Kentucky. Kentucky. Was that yeah. your first Kentucky bird? First Kentucky bird. Yeah. How was that one? It was fun too. Yeah, we had the worst hunting conditions ever. So I went up there um, with my pastor Jason Cruz. Um, I go to his church down in Franklin, and he used to have the hunting show, Rugged American Hunter, on. Okay. Uh, it was a old Mossberg show. Um, and so he's taught me so much about turkey hunting the last couple of years that I never knew. Um, and he went with me up there, and I remember there was, I mean, the wind was blowing like 25 miles an hour all oh, day. Oh, man. Just awful. You couldn't hear mm-hmm. anything. They couldn't hear us. <laughs> and so we thought there's no way we we're going to get it done. Um, and so the only chance we had, we got on the mule and just drove around looking for them, trying to spot them and, mm-hmm. and put some, you know, got crawled. I don't know how far, uh, you know, tried to get a hill in, in between us and got to the top of sorry, um, got to the top of this hill and finally got close enough where he could hear a box call as loud as you could possibly <laughs> get on it um, and came right on in. So it was awesome. Wow. That's cool. That's cool. So three, I think it's cool that you got three birds and those three yeah. trifecta yeah. connected yeah. states yeah. right there. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. And your deer season, I saw you uh, on Instagram there. You'd had a pretty good deer season in a couple states too we did we did I, kentucky's been great to me um and up there i take my dad up there every year um usually around thanksgiving um he, he doesn't bow hunt um he had neck surgery so he can't pull a, a bow back mm-hmm. so i i got him a crossbow and we go up mm-hmm. there and crossbow hunt a little bit i take him too I, i've used a normal bow but um and then i'll take him back during rifle season and hunt so last year he got a buck and i didn't and this year i got a buck and he didn't so i guess it's his turn again <laughs> next year um trade up yeah but it was awesome and then um uh, went back to georgia for uh i think that was christmas break mm. uh that i got a deer it might have been thanksgiving i can't remember um but just hunting down there on a little little small spot on the river down in south georgia and you just you can't beat that home hunting was it your dad that introduced you to the outdoors initially it was yeah yeah, gosh i was probably two or three the first time he took me um and we had this big uh box blind or you know box stand that he had had custom built um and you know it was the inside was big enough i could lay down and he would just take when i was a baby my mom was working whatever and he'd make me a pallet and i'd sleep on the floor while he hunted yeah and you know he tried to keep me quiet and uh but i mean the first couple of seasons i was doing that and then i um killed my first deer when i was nine i think oh got good. a, got a awesome. doe but yeah i grew up sleeping on the floor of his stand and then he he ran dogs back in in georgia and south um, East Georgia, they do a lot of dog hunting, so uh-huh. I'd run or ride around in the truck with him while he did that growing up for a couple of years, and then he got out of that and when gas got expensive. <laughs> uh, but it was fun. But yeah, he he definitely introduced me to it. That's good. That's cool. Yeah, it's that's the story a lot of folks have. You know, their, yeah, their dad or their granddad or yeah, you know, a close family member brought them up in the outdoors, and mm-hmm. those are great memories to to have and to hold. Oh yeah, yeah, and fishing too. Yeah, fishing too. My my great grandpa. Ran a bait shop in our little town for 50 years called Little's Bait and Tackle. And so my dad grew up in the bait shop. Okay. And I grew up in the bait shop um, <laughs> for a few years while, while uh, my great-grandma was still living. She ran it. And so I'd always get in trouble for playing in the in the minor tank over there or something. So, but, yeah, so I grew up fishing, too. Well, what's your, favorite, uh, what's your favorite bait? What do you love to fish with? If I had to pick one thing to fish with the rest of my life, it'd be a U-Vibe. Speed worm, June bug color from Zoom. Okay. I catch, I can catch. If I don't have any luck on anything else, I can always find something huh. on that. So awesome. Well, what's uh, have you been fishing in Tennessee at all? I guess maybe you have. Haven't yeah, you? a little bit. Um, I, I mean, I went a couple times on Percy, yeah, and a couple times on Old Hickory. I don't get to go a whole lot, you know. Music just just slammed with that. We may have to change um, that. I'd love to. I'd love to. I used to. I fished on the um, college on the Georgia team. Oh, uh, really? When I was in college for cool. uh, college bass fishing, and then uh, when I got up here, you know, let the let the tournament boat go, and so I've got a little fifteen foot um, John boat with a, this stick steer, and so it's it's fun to get out there. You just can't get out there on the weekends. You about get flipped oh, over, right? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But, yeah. But it's fun. Hey, it I gets the it. job done. That's exactly right. 
Uh, well, let's hear another song. You, you uh, just happened today. You came out of the studio. Uh, been yeah. Working on a new EP, right? Yep. Uh, we cut we cut three songs, which well, I shouldn't say cut. That's industry jargon for record. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. We recorded three songs and immediately I drove straight from there to here. So, <laughs> so um, it's fresh on your mind, and this is fresh on my mind. Can, can we uh, say this? You heard it here first on Wildcast. Uh, but... Yeah, you actually can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you Especially definitely this arrangement. I guess it got rearranged a little bit. During well, the session, yeah, right? yeah. So if you're listening, disclaimer: we literally just recorded this song about an hour and a half ago and changed some of the music to it. So if I mess this up, y'all forgive me. Uh-huh. Um, I might need to tune this a little. But that happens. I mean, that happens in the studio. You, yeah. You get in there and. and you got a few players in there, and they're like, "Man, it would sound better like this, or yeah, you know, right. try that." Yeah, somebody comes up with a lick at the, on the intro, and you go, "Wow, let's let's build something around that," you know. So, <laughs> yeah, so that's neat. That's close enough for government work. Hey, yeah, yeah that's where we are. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> this one right here is called "God's Got to Be a Country Boy." The sun sinking over a ridge on the edge of the earth out in the countryside. One night in the clear, looking up at the stars, mixing in with the moon, backlighting the pines. One wash of the rain, one change of the leaves, two feet in the mud out where the river winds. From the white tails down to the creek fish, I bet he said, Man, I really gonna love this. If you ever been standing where I'm standing now Out on some middle of nowhere, howling ground Bet it's loud and clear when you hear his voice You can't tell me this hallelujah kind of place Ain't just a little piece of heaven that he didn't paint For somebody like me to escape the noise There ain't a doubt in my mind God's got to be a country boy One look at a girl, fireflies in her eyes Wildflower halo in her auburn hair One kiss from an angel on that kind of a night I'll leave you looking up and sending in a thank you prayer If this picture's really how you wanted it to be I bet the man upstairs is just like me if you ever been standing where I'm standing now Out on some middle of nowhere howling ground Bet it's loud and clear when you hear his voice You can't tell me this hallelujah kind of place Ain't just a little piece of heaven that he didn't paint For somebody like me to escape the noise There ain't no doubt in my mind God's got to be a country boy I bet me and him ain't all that different When I get to the gates we're going fishing Cause God's got to be a country boy God's got to be a country boy God's got to be a country boy Yeah, I bet he's a country boy If you ever been standing where I'm standing now Out on some middle of nowhere, howling ground I bet it's loud and clear when you hear his voice You can't tell me this hallelujah kind of place Ain't just a little piece of heaven that he didn't paint for somebody like me to escape the noise Oh no, there ain't no doubt in my mind God's gotta be a country boy mm-hmm. Yeah! Something like that. I like Thank it. y'all. I like Thank it. Thank you, man. I like it. Thank you. Hardest part is not 
just laying back and singing a harmony part with <laughs> hey, you. You should know? have, yeah. You should have. Yeah, no, I'm wishing I had some drumsticks. Yeah, yeah, right, <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, that was fun, man. I'm excited. Good stuff. I can I can hear the influences of some of those artists that you talked about earlier, you know, and, and yeah. your voice sounds great. It's, Thank you. It's, a, it's Thank awesome. You. Good stuff. Thank you, man. Thank you. I, I enjoyed it. Um, and we ain't got time for many more songs. I wish we did, but I wanted to touch on some of the, the support local farmers. I see you're wearing the hat today. Yeah. Uh, tell us what that is all about. Yeah, so um, like I said, agriculture's you know, I've always been around it. I always appreciated it and went to school for it. And when I decided to do music full time, I was always looking for a way to still be involved in that world yeah. um, or try to, you know, marry music with agriculture. And uh, there was a company that had made these support local farmers hats, and I saw one, and I just got it, and I just loved the hat, and I was wearing it all the time. Um, and people started commenting on my videos if I was posting a song in it, going, hey, man, where'd you get that hat? And it kind of became a popular thing. And so I talked to the company, and I was like, hey, can I have some of these hats to do a giveaway or something? they were like, well, we don't make these hats anymore. Um, you know, but you can, if you want to do something with a design, you can have the design. I was like, yeah, absolutely. So, Mm. um, so I did and, and started having hats, koozies and t-shirts made with support local farmers logo on it. Um, and then my name's on the back of it and that's my merch at the shows. That's some of, most of it is our merch at our shows. Um, and so a portion of all the sales from the Support Local Farmers merch is going to go to a scholarship that we're starting to help a student of a, a farming family go to school for ag. Nice. And so it's kind of a cool way to, to marry those two worlds together. And uh, and uh, so it works out, and it, it really worked out because at the time I, I was going out on tour with Cody Johnson for a few dates. And I didn't have any merch, mm. and uh, it worked out too because nobody knew who the heck I was. But <laughs> So we put my name real little and just Port Logo Farmers in the front, and people were like, oh, that's cool. So um, so it worked out, and um, it's been it's been good, good to us and for a good cause. And so we're excited um, to keep, you know, try to grow this thing and, and uh, see where it can go. Nice. I, nice. Could, I could see the – uh, the farmers and, and the outdoors people relating to, to your music and, and it's a good connection there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and that's a good absolutely. cause to feel like it's the the right demographic. Yeah. And it goes hand in hand, it you does. know. It's awesome. I haven't met a farmer yet that doesn't like country music. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's the best to be playing in the tractor, right? Yeah, Funny exactly. How that works, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Some good sound systems in those so uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well we're hey, gonna, uh, go hey I was just gonna say uh Fresh off the CMA Fest mm-hmm. week, and uh, I heard, you know, a little rain got in the way of your it show did. that was due it to did. be Sunday afternoon. And, it did. I mean, kind of a big finale. But then, yeah. what an honor to be uh, uh, selected to be one of the artists that's going to perform at the Hard Rock uh, stage. Yeah, man. I was so looking forward to it. We did that stage last year in the Maui Gym, and uh-huh. uh, we were back on the Hard Rock stage this year for CMA Fest, and it, it got called off 30 minutes before for for the rain so it was a bummer but we'll be back next year and and, uh, hopefully we'll be playing an even bigger stage that's great we'll see well I'd say it will be a bigger stage if the the pace you're going now I'm loving the music I'm sure it'll I'm sure it's going to take off even more than it already has Uh, find him at Jordan Rowe Music on Instagram uh, Jordan uh, Rowe Official dot com for the website yep Uh, Yep. go listen to some of his stuff yeah Uh, Check out his, his photos and some of his hunting adventures on his Instagram. That's always fun to follow. And yeah. It's been fun. Hey, I appreciate y'all having me on. It has been fun. Yeah. It's an awesome spot. Yeah. So uh, we'll have to have you back. Maybe we can uh, remedy that fishing problem you have. We'll, we'll, find, we'll do some more fishing <laughs> Hey, or I'm so down. I need a farm pond. That's what I need. All if right. you're out there listening, I need a farm pond. <laughs> These big lakes ain't it. I might have a connection there. Yeah. Right? yeah. There we go. Uh, all right. Well, this is Tennessee Wildcast. Todd, thank you for running the board, making it sound good. Uh, Jordan, thank you for being with us once yeah. again. Thank y'all. Thank you, uh, Don. As you always, bet. you bet. Thank, thank you, you, Jordan. Man. Appreciate you. Thank y'all. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, have a good one. Thanks for tuning in. Stay connected with TWRA by visiting our website at tnwildlife.org, and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hey, it's all about Tennessee wildlife. It's what we do. Tennessee Wildcast will be on the air again next week. We'll see you then.